Hey everyone, and welcome to a special guide where we'll be teaching you concepts and techniques the world champion FunPlus Phoenix Dune B uses to win in solo queue. We'll also be putting you to the test with 10 questions to see just how much you know about League of Legends and whether you're as good as a world champion. Make sure to keep track of how many you get right and let us know how you did in the comment section below. Alright, enough hype, let's jump straight into it with Dune B playing Lissandra against Pantheon mid. The game starts just like all of our solo queue games with a level 1 invade that goes horribly wrong. With all of them dying, and if this wasn't enough, Doing B also uses his flash, which is now on cooldown. Oh yeah, and he has to then use his teleport to get back to lane. So before the game has even started, he's down 3 kills and has no summoner spells. This is exactly why we chose this replay, to show you how even when you're behind with proper decision making, you can come back to victory. So as we get back to lane as Lissandra, there are a couple pieces of information we want to take into consideration. First, since Pantheon got kills and assists, he'll have a bit of an experience lead from them. Second, since we arrived to lane late, it means that minions died when we weren't there, giving Pantheon an even further XP advantage. So this is our first question, and we're going to keep it simple to help you warm up. What is Lissandra's biggest concern right now between levels 1 and 2? Well, since Pantheon has an XP lead, it's that he'll hit level 2 first, unlocking a second ability in the form of his stun. This is why Lissandra is playing so far back and safe, making sure not to get caught by surprise by Pantheon hitting level 2 and then engaging on her. So the wave crashes and Lissandra hits level 2. Now I want you to pay special attention to the next minion wave. Notice how the enemy Pantheon is not damaging it, only looking to last hit. Isn't this a bit strange? I mean, sure, Lissandra's summoner spells are on cooldown, but so are Pantheon's from the early level 1 fight. Isn't being this pushed up dangerous for Pantheon, he could be ganked by the enemy jungler while having no flash. Wouldn't he want to push the wave to get it to reset, and so that way he would be in a much safer position? Well, let's jump back into the game. Hold on, let's pause it here. There's a certain rule at play with these minions. Look at the minion wave. I want you to tell me, which direction are the minions pushing towards, and what is causing it to push in that direction? This is a concept we've taught you before, called the even minion rule. When we look at the minion wave, we can see both waves have the same amount of minions, 3 casters, and 1 siege minion. Whenever two waves have the same number of minions, it means it will push towards the tower that it's furthest away from. This is due to the fact that the reinforcing wave will arrive sooner for the tower it's closest to. This will cause those minions to group up and damage much earlier and begin to push towards the opposite tower. We can see this even minion rule come into effect on the next wave, it's pushing towards Pantheon's side of the map and a big wave is building up for Lissandra. And this leads us into our third question, is the fact that it's pushing towards Pantheon a good thing or bad thing for Lissandra? It's bad news for Lissandra for several different reasons. First, as we've already mentioned, our summoner spells are on cooldown, and so being pushed up leaves us more vulnerable to a gank from the enemy jungler. Second, it has to do with the matchup. Pantheon is an aggressive lane bully that is an early game threat. Third, Pantheon already has an experience and gold lead from the early level 1 fight. Our greatest risk is that Pantheon thins out this wave, damaging some of the minions, but leaving around 3 caster minions alive, setting up a freeze. This would leave us extremely pushed up the lane, both vulnerable to a jungle gank, as well as being run down the lane by Pantheon. And so in this moment, we have to make an important decision, and this leads into our fourth question. What does Lissandra need to do to get out of this risky position? The answer is crash the wave into the tower. Crashing a wave is just another way of saying that she needs to hard push the minions. This way, she gets the wave into the tower before Pantheon can thin it out and set up a freeze. This is the battle going on beneath the surface between these two players. Lissandra uses a Q to start pushing the wave, but then shortly after, we see Pantheon engages. This engage is to prevent Lissandra from continuing to damage the wave and buy time for the next upcoming wave to arrive, cementing the freeze outside of his tower for Pantheon. Now, a common question or a complaint players have is how do challenger players keep track of all this information at once in real time as it can seem very overwhelming? And the trick is that they really don't. Let's go back to explain what I mean. You see, what they do instead is recognize patterns in the game, then instantly draw on knowledge they've already memorized. 
For example, when this wave gets to Lysandra's tower and both waves have an even number of minions, doing B will instantly recognize the even minion rule is in effect and that it's now pushing towards the opponent. So he's already able to anticipate that on the next wave, he's going to run into some issues with Pantheon potentially looking to set up a freeze in front of his tower. This is the trick challenger and pro players use. They aren't analyzing and coming up with answers in real time, they are looking for patterns in advance and then instantly recalling the answer they already know. And now look at how much extra time he has to use his brain to focus on other things, since he already knows his game plan for the next 30 seconds. Suddenly, we can watch the minimap a bit more intently, realizing our jungler is nearby. Hmm, maybe we can use that to our advantage. Wait a second, Elise just showed up on the minimap. Maybe we have to fight a 2v2. As you can see, this is the trick. There are certain parts of the game you can learn and memorize, and by doing so, it frees your brain to then focus on things you can't know in advance, like changes on the minimap. Still, we're in quite the predicament. Pantheon got us low on health. At the same time, Lee Sin got pushed out of the jungle by Elise, who's a level up. When we look at mid, we can see Pantheon has the freeze set up. If we go back to lane, we can easily be killed by the enemy Elise. So I want you to tell me, what is the correct play in this position? Your first goal should be to call for your jungler's help in pushing the wave into the enemy's tower. This will then give you a timing window to recall and head back to lane. I know, I know, don't spam the comment section, your jungler would never do this for you. Still, this is something you should always at least try, as this is one of the safest and most effective ways to break a freeze, just get your jungler to come into lane and push it with you. However, if your jungler isn't able to do this, then Lissandra can actually just recall in this position. Pantheon doesn't have teleport or any way of getting back into lane fast, and given how low on health he is, he needs to recall as well. Sure, since it's pushing, Lissandra would lose a few minions, but if she instantly recalls, Pantheon will be forced to recall shortly after, she'll get to lane first, and then can finish shoving out the wave before Pantheon gets back, breaking the freeze. So Lee Sin starts helping Lissandra push, and hold on, Elise then shows up. Let's pause it here. Tell me, what should Lissandra look to do in this position? The answer is engage on Pantheon. Remember, he has no summoner spells to escape and is low enough on health to instantly one-shot. This allows us to trade one for one, with the kill leveling up Lee Sin to level 3, not to mention that with such a large minion wave built up, this also helps Lee Sin win the fight and kill Elise shortly after. Just as important though is that it then allows Lee Sin to finish crashing the wave into the tower, breaking the freeze. Hold on though, when we take a closer look, we can see something very interesting taking place. Sure, our big wave of minions got pushed into the enemy's tower, but the enemy's wave ends up getting caught on it. Much like the even minion rule we went over earlier, this minion state also has a specific effect associated with it. So I want you to tell me, when a wave gets caught like this under tower, what does it cause? It causes a push to the other tower. This is what's referred to as a rebound. The reason it's called a rebound is that we first push a big wave into the enemy's tower. The enemy's reinforcing wave then gets caught on it and causes it to bounce back in our direction. This is for similar reasons to the even minion rule. The minions are too close to one side of the map, therefore reinforcing waves will arrive sooner, damaging and gripping up earlier and causing a push in the opposite direction. Again, Doing B will be aware of this as he walks back to lane, realizing that a rebound has occurred and that the wave will be pushing back to him. This is almost an identical situation that we saw earlier, just reversed. Remember, when we saw Lissandra was the one that was pushed up? Our biggest worry at the time was Pantheon setting up a freeze. Well, in the current position, Lissandra can now thin out the wave and set up a freeze of her own. This is why Pantheon immediately begins auto-attacking the minions and using abilities on them. He needs to prevent the freeze and crash the wave into the tower. Here's the thing though, by Pantheon pushing the wave into the tower, it frees him up to then leave the lane and roam since there are no minions left for him. At the same time, Lissandra is pinned to the tower having to clear the minions left over. So we should immediately be on red alert, Pantheon can roam during this moment. Looking at the minimap, which lane do you think Pantheon is most likely to gank? The answer is bot lane, they are the ones that are pushed up the furthest. Additionally, we have a ward on the top side of the map that Pantheon would have shown in. Lissandra throws down a back ping bot side as you should always do when your laner roams. However, we're faced with another decision of what to do next. I want you to tell me, do we follow Pantheon's roam to the bottom side of the map? 
or do we instead just stay and push the wave mid? The answer is that we want to push the wave mid. Whenever your laner pushes into roaming, it pins you down and makes you too slow to react. It's a waste of time to try and move bot at this point. Instead, our priority is to push the wave mid. This way, Pantheon gets punished for his roam by losing minions to his tower. Additionally, we can take turret plates, helping make up for any kills he could have gotten bot lane. And this will be a common theme for the rest of the laning phase. Pantheon is a lane bully that's ahead, it's nearly impossible for Lissandra to get control of the lane. Additionally, Pantheon has his ultimate, which makes his roaming even more effective. But what's pivotal is that Lissandra doesn't make the mistake of trying to follow him. Instead, she pushes up the wave each time to deny Pantheon minions to the tower and get turret plates. Sure, Lissandra's bot lane is now behind, there's no argument about that. But what's more important is that Lissandra kept herself in the game enough that she can actually win a 2v2 against Pantheon and Elise. And it's after this moment by answering all of our questions correctly that Lissandra gets Pantheon's and Elise's shutdown, and is now actually ahead of Pantheon by 400 gold. Still, the enemy bot lane successfully snowballed, taking the bot tower and has now rotated mid lane. This leaves us with one final question. How should Lissandra react to the fact that the enemy bot lane has now rotated mid? Should Lissandra stay mid, looking to hold pushes by the enemy bot lane and defend the tower? Or should she go into the side lane bot, pushing and pressuring the lane there? You almost always want to swap with your bot lane when their tower falls. This is for several different reasons. First, with the enemy bot lane ahead, you want to avoid them. Staying mid means you'll only be able to take fights around the enemy's strongest players, not exactly a good idea. By swapping with your bot lane, you'll be able to look for plays on the bottom side of the map, away from the enemy's winning bot lane. Second, with the enemy bot pressuring mid, it means there are two players there. Your support will have to rotate from bot, and suddenly you'll find yourself splitting experience with them. Getting into the side lane prevents this and lets you keep getting that sweet solo XP. Doing B actually uses this side lane pressure to stall the game out, creating advantages for his own team. and eventually netting them the victory. If you enjoyed this guide, you should consider joining us at skillcap.com. We release some crazy guides on our website which are exclusive to our subscribers. With over 100 courses which target the biggest things that stop you from climbing, with over 800 individual guides, we're sure you'll improve. You can even input your rank before signing up to see where we think you'll climb to. If you do not hit that rank while actively using Skillcapped, you'll be eligible for a refund. So there's literally no risk. And be sure to let us know how many questions you got right in the comments below, along with which you felt were the most difficult. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.